talking about that all season long. They must get off to a great start. That momentum builder throughout this session and tomorrow is absolutely critical. And there is no tomorrow when it comes to two of those question marks right there because two of the other teams will be going home for the rest of the season. Two swimmers have finished second. Person is set though between the two of them have won six times. Best event of the day on paper. Can you imagine if Cox shows up today? Can you, I mean, this New York team would go crazy if for some reason, somehow, he could get in there and win this. And New York, who many people, including myself, I picked them fourth coming into this match. But here comes Person, but still full second behind Cody Miller. Cody Miller. Highest finish this season was second. He's trying to get his first win, and he's going to turn first, headed to the final 25 meters. We'll see if he can hold off Person. Iron needs some points. They need Person to come surging home here. He's not going to do it. I think Miller's going to get him. Person at the end. Oh! Gets the win by five one hundredths of a second. How did he do oh, that, folks? Fuck oh, you, dude. Wow. wow. Any team needed it right now, this very moment, it was iron. No question about it. I thought Miller had it. And you're right, it was this. I mean, look at that right there. You think this is all Cody Miller. No problem. And at the final serves, that final stroke of person. So iron within eight points of a spot in the playoffs at the moment. Up in lane number seven and there, Tom DeBoer, Marco Orsi. Both has been second. It's only one swimmer in this field that's won this season. It starts there in the middle by DeBoer. He was .65. Orsi right next to him, his teammate .63. And Orsi really quick into the turn, as is Hopper at the top in lane number seven. Look at that turn for Hopper. He comes out of it, breaks it up first. Is he gonna be able to hold on? Yes, he does. He gets it done. Cindy Gallagher says that's another win for DC. His turn was unbelievable. He has great underwater party. And if he had the momentum going into the wall, what he was going to be able to provide coming off the wall, he'll be toward the top in lane number seven. And he came off that wall with so much speed. You were right. It just gets in the wall. Six one hundredths of a second over DeBoer. Although Iron did finish second and fourth, and on the backs of the relay win, DC, they're the first team to 100. But Tokyo on the flip side with Viseos winning the 200 IM, I feel like there's even more pressure on Ohashi to try to get the win and get the jackpots because you could have a couple of events not go your way, but you need the events that you're trying to win to win. That is so right, Bernie. You gotta take care of the business that you, you're capable of doing and they didn't do that in the men's 200 IM. And that wasn't so much on Seto, though. I mean, right. he, he outperformed. I mean, he, he went right on his best time of the season, but he just happened to run up against the freight train of Vizeos. And you could see at the bottom of your screen how tight it is with the three teams behind DC. Two points separates two through four. So, this is why every single point, every single jackpot, every single one one hundredth of a second is critical and we're shaping up to be another good one. Look at this. Pretty much dead even again between these two swimmers. That's a great turn too for Wood. Gets up underneath that chop that was coming to the wall. Ahashi will be breathing into Wood coming home. 
She'll breathe right into it. She'll be able to see her so she knows exactly what's in store for her. Abby Wood trying to get her second win of the day, but Ohashi coming surging home. Here these two go again, and this time it is Ohashi that gets the win. Oh my goodness. They have put two incredible shows on. Was the full eight 100s. Ohashi just gets her on the last 50. 29 plus, she was the only swimmer in the field to break 30 at the end. And just got her on the touch. What a swim for both of them. But they finished eighth. Points for Tokyo, and they now would be into the playoff if the match ended right here. It They'll be all the way up in lane number eight, trying to get the win for DC. Good start in the middle. Koseki point six four. Silva up in lane number seven, Koseki. Down in lane number five, Koseki is coming charging home. And Koseki gets the win for Tokyo. They go first and third. Bring up front. An Asian record for Koseki. Wow, what a time to choose to go fast. Asian Dave record. Salo record, that is 26 flat and in control the whole way. And what that tells you most of all, Bernie, it will really help their cause. Going to the Tokyo Frog Kings as they have leapfrog iron into second. A lot of jackpots going on. I don't see it here as much because we don't have the Castiglione's or Lily King's or Atkinson's could step up and do this, but you don't recognize a lot of these names for sure. Idahoko has the best performance out of any in this group, finishing second this season. And one of the rare swimmers that have broken 30. Most in this field have not. She is the only one rated in the top 10. Off to that early lead. in the red is starting to pop up a little bit. Can't kind of tuck her, though. She's the 10th fastest in the ISL this season. But Hucko looks pretty good. Trying to get it for Iron. They need this win, and they're going to get it. First and fourth. No, you're so right, they really needed this one. That is just huge for Iron. First and fourth, too. Not only does she grab the jackpot, but Jenna Strauss finished fourth. And they move in front of Tokyo. You will have a first time winner this season from this event. Paseto actually won for Iron last weekend, but he is not in this event. Kawamoto, lane number five. Nikolaev looks really good, though, out there. Lane number seven, trying to snatch it away for DC. Nikolaev! Ah, DC! They've done it! They are on a roll. They finished first and fourth. Vizeos, who we just saw win the 200 IM, which is fourth, and just gets by Glinta. This is where 
Iron started doing this a couple days ago. They started losing races by hundreds of a second. Glenta, three one hundredths of a second behind Nick. And they keep building their lead, folks. Now approaching 200 points in the battle for that final spot. I like DC and Hopkin at the end as well. They're at the very top. But remember, it's the combination of the two teams, so it's not necessarily just the winner. We've seen a couple of cases like that this year where the teams that finished second and third or second and fourth actually outscored yep. the winning relay. And she is in there now swimming very well, and she's gonna definitely give DC the early lead. By a full second over the second team for Iron. And yeah. Tucker trying to give Tokyo the edge halfway through this relay. A nice swim for Tucker. She was second in the 50. And she goes 104.6. That's the fastest split of any team there. And Renomi Cromoyoyo, she's going to have a chance as well. Oh boy, look at this, Bernie. Look at this 6 100s between the top three swimmers. She's told you over and over again she wants Iron to go to Eindhoven so she can bring her teammates home. Hopkin, though, trying to bring this one home for DC, but no, it's Iron getting it done. What a final leg for Renomi. And we choose the skin. We choose the skin. On the end, for Ro Renomi Kromovayoyo, the fastest split of the year in the medley relays. No one's been under 51. Anna Hopkin, how about that for a 51-1, but just too much of the champion Kromovayoyo. Now the question is. Moving on to Eindhoven and Renomi, I'm a little bit worried if I am Tokyo at the moment. And I'll tell you why. Pebbly and Miller will go first and second on DC's relay in lane seven. Yep. Their best flyer and freestyler, Harding and Apple, will go third and fourth for their quote unquote B relay up there in lane number eight. Okay. So they're splitting their relays. Trying to maximize the points. Maximize the points indeed. They're not gonna go in with the lead here, that's for sure. Ah, good start there for Nikolaya. Uh, So-called B relay, Pebbly was fifth at 50.9. Nikolaev was 50.2. Go next for DC's outside relay. Up there in lane number eight. Harding was 46 plus on their free relay earlier. And Iron goes in with a lead burning, but look how close it is. Two tenths between three teams. The downside for Tokyo is we haven't seen a whole lot of red. No, and their best finisher in the 53 was Morozov. He was fifth. And Spajari was seventh. Yeah. Nemeth has got a second lead for Dave Taylor's squad. Oh, this, Zach Apple trying to track him down. This is so big for Tokyo. And I don't, I don't think they're gonna do it. I think Tokyo's looking pretty good. Now, DC has a chance though in getting second. And if they can move up from fifth, Tokyo's other team is sixth, Bernie. And now they're falling close to being seventh. Zach Apple trying to charge home. But Nemesis, no way the relay win goes to Tokyo and the Frog Kings. DC second and fourth. 24, I think DC is gonna do it, Bernie. Yeah. DC with that second and fourth spot still adding up the points, making sure the jackpots don't come into play.
Jackpots that were not a factor there. So they will enter the second day in a spot to move over to Eindhoven. And DC, what a first day for Cindy Gallagher and the DC Trident.